Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 1st, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Pascal today published a second part to his diary about the ACH method and applied it to the WannaCry outbreak. Now he took what Digital Shadows did last week and expanded it with a couple of additional hypotheses. Essentially his outcome isn't all that different from what they found. Lazarus Group, state actor, sophisticated financial actor, all of that actually ranks quite low. He also added a couple of other criteria and is sharing his spreadsheet so you can play with this a little bit yourself and uh, see what results you come up with. And security company Cryptos Logic did publish some results from the WannaCry sinkhole that they apparently ran. Turns out that the domain, the kill switch domain, was actually redirected to a sinkhole that they operate and they published now some data from it. They detected a total of around 700,000 unique IP addresses hitting their sinkhole. Now, how that correlates with the number of actual infected hosts is always a tricky undertaking, but the actual number is likely larger because some of these hosts, of course, were behind NAT and showed up as one IP address. The Cryptos research goes a little bit into details on that. The other thing that they show very obviously here, and it was sort of known before, that China was hit quite hard by WannaCry more than other countries. Actually, it looks like they have about six times the infection rate of the US and Russia. In part, that has been attributed to Chinese systems being usually less often patched. And that again has been attributed to a lot of Chinese systems running illegal copies of software, which of course the users are afraid may be disabled if it's being patched. But uh, one thing Crypto's research was also looking at is how Windows XP is actually being affected by WannaCry. It was widely reported uh, in the aftermath that there weren't really all that many Windows XP systems that got infected. And remember how Microsoft actually specifically released a patch for Windows XP. Well, in the experiments that Crypto's did, uh, Service Pack 2, Windows XP Service Pack, who actually was not infected by a WannaCry. Windows XP Service Pack 3 was vulnerable and could get infected, but more often just uh, blue screened and as a result uh, did not uh, get infected. So the conclusion they're drawing here that Windows XP just isn't really stable enough uh, to actually be infected by WannaCry, at least not reliably. Remember again, this was a heap based uh, buffer overflow. Uh, These uh, buffer overflows tend to be a little bit uh, tricky and they don't always work on the first try. WannaCry did try on a particular IP address five times, and if it wasn't successful infecting it after five times, then it would give up. And the Department of Justice did indict a group of Mexican car thieves that apparently did use illegal access to a dealer database in order to help them steal Jeep Wrangler cars. The way this worked was that they first spotted a suitable car, then by noting the VIN number of the car, they would use a dealer database to which they gained illegal access in order to create a duplicate key. Now, just having the key pattern, having the key cut is of course not sufficient with modern cars. In this particular case, they use this key then to just unlock the door and the hood, disable the alarm system, and then they used a handheld programmer to actually pair the key with the electronic off the car so they could use the key to remove the car under. Now, in this case, there was not much hacking involved, all they had to do was actually get the credentials for this database from a dealer in Mexico. Now, I didn't really see whether they just stole it or paid them or got these credentials otherwise. 
And yesterday I mentioned uh, tools that you can use uh, to audit your cloud, particular AWS uh, configuration. Well, if you need more reason to apply it, there was actually a good story that I uh, saw today about lots of secret documents uh, being published by a defense contractor without their knowledge by leaving their S3 storage open for everybody to access. And then I also have an interesting blog here about uh, public EWS snapshots. So EWS, that's the elastic block storage that you usually use for volumes in your virtual machines in AWS. Well, uh, you can share them with specific users or you can make them public, which apparently is more common than it should be. The blog also mentioned how they monitored and found some of these snapshots and then how they extracted confidential data from them. So if you got a minute this week, uh, maybe double check your AWS configuration, make sure you don't have any public snapshots sitting around that should not be public. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.